Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex, and this month we're taking a look again at subtitles. In the past, we've looked at the Plex Pass feature that allows you to download subtitles automatically without having to leave the interface. We also did an extensive video about how to manage subtitle files, get them on your server manually. In this one, we're going to take a look at three different things that you can do should the subtitles not be lining up with your content. One is some manual offsets that you can set. Another one is an automatic subtitle feature if you have a Plex Pass. And the third option will show you how to create your own subtitles using free open source software. So lots of fun ahead. Before we get into this though, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they did not review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and take another look at subtitles. So we're going to begin with a simple example here of a movie that's playing with some SRT subtitles beneath it. Now, let's say we got this subtitle file and we're off by like five seconds or three seconds or whatever. We can jump into the menu here and set a standard offset that will apply across the board. So what I'm going to do is pull up my playback screen here. I'm going to go over to the three periods. I'm on an Android device right now. It's similar on most other devices, but on the Apple TV, you might have to push the down button to get to this menu. Either way, you're going to look for playback settings. And when you get into this screen, you can make all of your adjustments. Now you can see we've got subtitles here selected. We'll demo the auto sync in a few minutes. What I'm going to do is adjust the subtitle offset here. And what this allows me to do is change the timing in 50 millisecond increments. So what I can do here is go up by 50 milliseconds. That will change when these subtitles appear. You'll get a number here in the right hand corner that indicates how many milliseconds we've done the offset by. I can also go in the other direction too. So you can fine tune things to get it to where you need it to be. And if you totally screw it up, you can hit reset here and things will go back to their normal position. So this is pretty much the way you do it. It's not very difficult and you can go in there and fine tune when those subtitles appear should things just be off a little bit. One of the challenges though that you're going to run into with subtitles is that if you downloaded a subtitle file that was timed for a movie that was at 24p, but you happen to have the video as a 4K60, if somebody did some kind of uh, re-encoding of it, those subtitles will begin to drift off. And this next feature will help you adjust for the drift, which doesn't necessarily have a set number of seconds that you need to adjust by. Let's take a look at that. Now this feature is called Auto Sync Subtitles. You do need to have a Plex Pass for this, and the viewer also needs a Plex Pass for this feature to work. Now it's got some requirements. The first one is that you're on the Plex Media Server 1.41.0. In other words, bring your system up to date. It runs on the 64-bit version of the Plex Media Server, and there are some servers that are not supported at all. So I'm going to scroll down to that section real quick so you can see the current list that isn't supported. So right now, 32-bit systems don't work with this, except Windows. ARM version 7 systems don't work with this. On Android, the NVIDIA Shield and some other NAS devices don't work, along with FreeBSD. Remember, this is the server, not the client. So if you have one of these servers here, it's not going to work for you, but for everything else, it should work. I know a lot of you are probably running on 64-bit Windows or Linux, and you should be fine there. Hate to jump back up so quickly on you there, but I wanted to go back to the supported players. It is supported across most of the popular players in the Plex ecosystem that includes your mobile devices, your PlayStations, your Apple TVs, and of course they will add support to devices over time. Now there's a bunch of settings that you have to enable to get this feature to work, and it can be enabled on a per library basis as well. So why don't we jump into our server settings and see what we have to flick on to get this feature working. So I am inside of my Plex server settings now. You can see my server name here. What you want to look for is settings library. This is not to be confused with manage libraries, which is a different setting section. Uh, so what you want again is settings library. And what you're going to see is something similar to this. I have the advanced settings enabled. This is what it looks like if they're off. And what you want to look for is down below here, there's a setting that says generate voice activity data. This is off by default. So you have to turn this on to get this feature to work. Again, you need a Plex Pass for this. And you can have it set as a scheduled task, which will run when your usual server maintenance initiates itself. 
or you can also have it run when new media is added to your library so it gets done right away. And what this will do is it will add an additional task to your data analysis of your media files and it will build out a voice print of the dialogue in the file that you have uploaded. And from that, it will try to match up a drifting uh, set of subtitles with the actual audio in the movie. Now, it's not going to be perfect, so we'll show you how to do your own later. But if you have, again, something that is drifting on a very uh, predictable basis, it will use that audio data to get everything resynced back up and in line. And if you're looking for a quick fix, this might very well do it. Now, we have this enabled, but we do have a few other settings to do, so let's take a look at what's next. So now we need to go to that other library setting under Manage Libraries, and I'm just going to do this in my demo folder here. I'm going to click on Edit Library, and we're going to go over to Advanced, and in here, we're going to see an option for enabling voice activity detection. I believe this is off by default, so we're going to turn it on here. And what's nice about this is that you don't have to turn it on for every library. You can have some libraries with this feature enabled and others without it. And so we're going to get that going. And now that we have all those settings ticked off here, we're now ready to use the feature. Now, if you've got media in your library already, you will need to go through and have your files analyzed if you don't want to wait for your scheduled tasks to run. So let me show you that step and then we'll see it in action. So inside of my library here, if I go to the media file, click on the three periods and click analyze, that will develop one of these voice prints if one doesn't already exist. I was surprised by how fast this is. This is not like transcoding a video. It happens relatively quickly. Now, if you're doing your entire library, you might see this running for a while, but on a file by file basis on a two hour movie, it's just a couple of minutes, if that. And if you're on a faster server, it'll be pretty quick. So this is a relatively low impact activity here. But now that we have that generated, uh, what I can do now is jump over to the media file here on my Android box. And we've got, of course, these subtitles going. And to enable this feature, we go back to those playback settings and you look for the auto sync subtitles. Now, if you have everything set up properly, you will see this as an option that you can enable. The screen will black out for a second, it will resync, and everything should work provided this uh, particular problem you're having fits within the parameters of this feature. It's a pretty narrow set of parameters. Again, it's designed mostly for drifting audio. I did try to make my own problems and couldn't get it to work. I was trying to find something that was safe to put on screen without a copyright issue. So I've been using this 10-minute uh, Netflix film. Uh, but I have heard from some other folks who've been able to get this feature to work, and it does work, uh, again, provided the uh, timings between these things are not too far out of whack and there's some uh, degree of predictability to the drift. And it will try to match things up with the audio that it's hearing. So it's a nice feature to have if uh, you're having those issues and it's worth trying. And if it works, great. If not, I'll show you some other option in a second. Now you can also confirm whether or not your media file has one of these voice prints assigned to it. So if we click on those periods again and go over to get info and we scroll down here, you'll see a new option that says has voice activity. If it's set to true, then one of those voice prints was successfully created for this particular file. Now, just as an aside, I can use this Netflix content without a copyright concern because Netflix has a Creative Commons open content website. And so long as you cite its source, you are able to use these things under a Creative Commons license. So here is Meridian 2016. You can get it at opencontent.netflix.com. And I want to thank Netflix for providing this to the world. And now that we've got the citation out of the way, we can move on to the next part of the video, which is creating your own subtitles. So if these two methods did not work for you, you can take your media file and drop it into this really cool free app that I featured a few months ago called Vibe. This is free and open source. It uses the Whisper engine, which is a speech to text engine and it will use AI on your computer without going out to the cloud to transcribe files. So here I loaded up a demo MKV file of one of my YouTube videos. I have this section here set to SRT, which is the external format that Plex likes quite a bit. And as you can see here from my video, it is making me an SRT file. After this is done, I can fix it by editing some of the transcript if it got some of it wrong. And then I can send this right into Plex and it will line up 
mostly perfectly with my content because it is working off your actual file as opposed to trying to match it up with somebody's transcription from another file. So if all else fails, Vibe is a great option. I'll put a link to it in the video description. I'll also put a link to the video that I did on Vibe so that you can uh, learn how to use it as well. But it's pretty simple, drag and drop, select SRT, and you are off and running. So there you go, some tips for subtitles on Plex if things are not synced up properly. Again, check out my other videos where we looked at the foundations of subtitles on Plex, and I'm sure we'll have more to talk about with subtitles in the future. I'm always looking for new ideas for Plex videos, so definitely let me know down in the comments below for an upcoming one. That will do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.